Hello, wine drinking people. I'm back with more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And God, I'm embarrassed to say I don't have a bottle of wine from this producer to put on the table as display ZD Winery, one of our favorite wineries here from Napa Valley, small family owned winery, started by Norm Deleuze and, uh, and Rosa, his wife, and really wonderful people. We've had Brett in for wine dinners, Teresa that showed us the wines. We've known her for years. I think she's worked for them for 15 years, which is an eternity. For uh, you know, a winery in Napa Valley for a national sales type person, and uh, they're just great people. We'd love to support wineries like this, so we will get these wines back in the store. I promise. ZD Winery. Uh, we've sent a lot of people there over the years, and we have been the number one ZD account in the nation retail in years past. So we'll get back on the bandwagon. They did some great new releases here, like this 2011 Chardonnay, a very difficult vintage here. So I'm sure their production that was off, uh, well, they said this is 60% of the production in the whole winery. So in a vintage like 2011, I would imagine their production was down considerably here. This wine is a blend of Monterey, Carneros, Santa Maria, and Sonoma fruits. And uh, like I said, now they've got the third generation entering in, Brandon and Jill now on board. So it's nice to see this is going to continue to be a family-owned winery. Chris Bassani, the winemaker, has been there even for 15 years. This wine's still aged in American oak, cold fermented. A good amount of that tropical fruit, some banana, some ripe peach, delicious apple. A nice hand of toasty oak, that vanilla, and some dill notes coming through. American oak, the textbook uh, well, this is the this is a great example of a American oak. This wine, a very unique for that reason. Not a lot of people use American oak in Chardonnay. A uh, good amount of fruit here on the tongue, smooth and creamy texture, and just the right amount of lightly toasted oak spice. Nice freshness on the finish. Uh, maybe just a little bit light and a little short on the finish, but a very good uh, example of 2011 Chardonnay at forty dollars and fifty cents. The ZD Pinot Noir Carneros. This has been uh, coming from the Jill Harris Vineyard for almost twenty years. Tony Soder planted some of these vines. All Dijon clones. Nice amount of spice to this black cherry, black raspberry fruit on the nose. Lovely complexity. Some exotic uh, uh, spice, floral notes coming through. Really smooth and silky on the tongue. One of the things we love about Pinot Noir, rich cherry fruit and uh, lovely roundness. Uh, pretty floral notes coming through on the finish as well and a lovely touch of spice. Good freshness and excellent Pinot at fifty-one seventy-five. And then the Founders Reserve Pinot Noir, the first release of this was 2007. And uh, this is pretty much what the Reserve Pinot Noir used to be, just an ode to Norm the Father. 600 cases of this vintage, all estate fruit from Carneros, uh, Hansel clones, uh, only six acres, farmed organically. And this wine says 15 months in Francois Frere barrels. So, yes, those are the expensive French ones. And a good amount of ripe cherry liqueur-like fruit on the nose. A host of brown spice. Some earthy notes coming through on this. Lovely complexity on the nose. Bright raspberry fruit. Kind of pomegranate also coming through. Some pretty floral notes. Like I said, very complex array of aromas here on the nose uh definitely a step up from the regular pinot noir very elegant and stylish on the palate one of the things we love about pinot that velvety silky texture and a host of those exotic spices and lovely freshness and balance with this wine coming through on that long finish most excellent juice at 78 75 and then the cabernet sauvignon this is what napa valley is all about folks we sold a lot of zd cabernet through the years a blend of stagecoach wild world atlas peak uh, vineyard a hossenfeld on atlas peak uh, Deaver and Coombsville, True Shard and Carneros, uh, and a little bit of Petit Verdot and Malbec in the blend as well. So this has got uh, several appellations in Napa Valley represented. Uh, they do have a, a small vineyard around the winery, but they buy most of the fruit for this wine, as they do for uh, most of their wines here. A good amount of dark cherry and currant berry fruit shown. A good hand of some sweet tobacco spice and a fresh plowed earth uh, kind of pepperiness to this wine as well. Lovely complexity on the nose, some dark cocoa there as well. Smooth and polished. Polished on the tongue, this 2010 vintage, a more classic vintage for Napa, meaning uh, not quite as fruit forward maybe, but this wine seemed to have a lot of appealing forward fruit, current uh, cherry, but nice structure on the palate. You notice that classic 2010 vintage coming through on the finish. Lovely, smooth, polished tannins and a host of spice and earth here. Only 6,400 cases produced in this vintage. I've been telling people 2010 and 2011 production is down. So you better get, you know, your 2009 stock up on what's in the market right now because prices are going up. Okay, 2009 Reserve Cabernet. Speaking of prices going up, whoa, $145. Well, hey, I was the one that told these guys when they first released Abacus. I think this is the 14th release they're coming out with now. 
how the hell are you going to sell a wine like that for $300? Well, hey, guess what? It's $600 now, and they only make 200 cases of it, and it sells out every year. So what the hell do I know? People think more expensive is better, and uh, sometimes it's just more expensive. But the uh, Cabernet Reserve is a step up from the regular Cabernet. This is a selection of the best fruit each year, so it's a vineyard selection. Um, always has the estate fruit in it kind of as its backbone, its core, the defining fruit in that, and then uh, some other hillside vineyards. Uh, only six to 700 cases produced of this wine, and a good amount of that dark currant, dark cherry fruit on the nose with a distinct earthiness in this one. You find it in the first wine, too, almost a dry tobacco spice, peppery notes uh, to the fruit, uh, really distinct. And like I said, you get this in the regular cab as well. This is 100% American oak, uh, which you don't see that very often in California. I guess there's a few people like Silver Oak and Camus using a fair amount of American oak, but most people are with the French oak. It's just a little more polished, especially for a wine of this price range. Uh, $150 a bottle. Anyways, this wine still has good complexity and a wonderful amount of ripe fruit, a hallmark of this 2009 vintage. These wines are very juicy, lovely ripeness, and uh, this wine's got a host of that spice that I mentioned from the nose coming through on the finish. A big Cabernet, 100% varietal, and uh, most excellent juice. I'd like to have this wine five, ten years from now. It's uh, got some tannins to resolve. A big wine. The Abacus number 14 is out. It's $605 a bottle. We didn't get to taste that, but uh, I've had Abacus in the past. It is a fantastic wine. It's a blend of every vintage of Reserve Cabernet made and put into a Solera, so similar to the way they make sherry. So there's a little bit of each vintage still left in there. They draw it off the bottom, they add the new wines onto the top, and the only wine that I know of made like this in the world. Well, Vegas Sicilia, I think, does it, but with only like three vintages. They don't, you know... They don't do the same style like they do in Sherry, uh, and it's just a really unique wine. The wine is fantastic, but it is $600. All right, well, that's what I had to drink with Teresa from ZD. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the wine watch, saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first.